Me and that baby girl here, we're, uh, we're going on another road trip. We're in Hope, gas stop number one, and as I watch the gas fill in my truck and the, uh, the price per liter, um, I always remember that uh, I make less money doing these trips than, uh, than I spend on gasoline, but it's so worth it. <laughs> Eight hours to go. Good Lord. Look at this mega cool R in the town of Headley. Imagine that, eh? Skiing down one of those. Just, you could literally boot pack from the town center and boot pack straight up to the top of the mountain. I don't even know how many meters of it. Maybe 600 meters of fall line? Jesus. But it'd have to be cold. Here's a misfire. So, stop for a pee break, but you're not gonna believe what, uh, you're not gonna believe what just happened. I gotta keep walking. I'm gonna walk while I'm at this rest stop because I wanna keep my legs moving. I'm at about the halfway point. I wanted to stop at this beautiful viewpoint that looks over um, a Soyuz lake, right? So I roll up, I love this viewpoint, it's really nice. If any of you have driven through a Soyuz, you know this viewpoint. I roll in, the parking lot's empty, minus one car, which is rare. Usually it's, you know, a lot of people there in the summertime. And a guy's down on his knee, um, you know, giving a proposal. And I got to pee so bad. But I felt bad because I didn't want to be this, you know, guy who pops out of his car in the middle of his big proposal. So I, <laughs> I squeezed past, just hit the gas, drove kind of around them and gone and, and let them be. I'm having my regrets because I got a lot of cameras. I should have probably popped my head out the window and said, hey, guys, you know, want me to snap a few pictures for you? But... Anyway, shout out to the couple who just got proposed and uh, hopefully um, I didn't ruin anything by, by driving through. Crashing weddings is one thing, but at the proposal stage, we got 500K to go. We'll probably stop around Trail or Rossland area. The wood smells good. Get a couple squats in. Squats, snacks, caffeine. My truck's been serving me well so far. You might remember that I had some compression, leak down loss and my engine is, uh, is dying or whatever according to Ford. So hopefully it doesn't die in Alberta because then I'll have to leave it there and I'll have the longest, can't really afford to fix it and I'll have the longest uh, ski tour back to Vancouver of all time on cement. Dude ski touring on cement down the crow's nest would be a pretty ridiculous one. Um, I've already eaten all my food almost for the day. So I'm gonna have to get some more snacks. Two bagels, three slices of pizza. You know, once the second you sit down in a car, all you wanna do is eat. Timmy's, if you ever wanna sponsor a ski channel for whatever reason, please pick me. But also if you don't wanna sponsor me, I'll just keep drinking your coffee in my videos because it's cheap and I like it. I've been driving for seven and a half hours. The back is starting to feel really tight. Legs are starting to feel tight. Everything's starting to feel tight. Brain is starting to feel tight. If that makes sense. But we're getting there. We're, we're plucking away. You just keep pushing that gas pedal. Thankful the weather's good. If this was a hairy weather drive, it'd be an optimistic timeline. Finally seeing some snow. A quick standing and water fill break. Honestly, one of the smartest things I do is I keep a big, you can see I keep this big uh, 20 liter jug of water in my car and I don't know what I'd do without it. I've had it in my truck ever since I used to live in the truck. When I used to live in the truck, I had three of these 20 liters in the summer. Um, we'd fill it up. We, Laura and I used to call it liquid gold, but, uh, but now I just keep one 20 liter jug of water in the truck at all times. And it's honestly awesome. I get to drink, you know, uh, drink water whenever I'm driving. If I want to top up my water bottle before a ski tour, I can. Um, if, if ever I need water, I get stuck, I have water. So like, I'd recommend to everyone, keep a big jug of water in your car, especially if you like doing outdoor sports and stuff or for anyone, it's just like a handy thing. Um, it's always nice to stay hydrated. I also turned the wrong way. So now we got to turn back around, but it's an excuse to stand up. So we're driving through the Kootenai Pass right now and I saw a couple parking lots filled with cars and by the looks of the mountains here it's pretty high elevation um we got some snow coming down i i'm guessing this is a pretty solid backcountry ski uh area kind of for the general zone here uh, i'm sure some of you watching this will have heard of it so i just rolled into creston bc doing another standing break 
There's two important things to know about Creston, BC. The first, it's where Kokanee is manufactured. It's one of my favorite beers, freshly brewed with the Canadian Kootenai water, hopefully from the Kootenai River, would sound cooler, but not necessarily sure it's actually from there. Um, not sure they take the water from the Kootenai River, but Kokanee is brewed in Creston, BC, which is super beauty. And there's a lot of mountains in Creston, BC. Second thing and the most important thing that comes to mind is in this exact parking lot. So in this exact parking lot would be like four years ago now, Laura had, Laura and I lived in the truck for, I don't know, four or five months. And in this exact parking lot, we slept and we got like, we slept four months, five months, never being bothered, sleeping in the back of the truck, felt totally safe. And this parking lot, two, um, you know, two dudes actually came up to the truck and were like peering in the windows at night while we were sleeping. And when we popped out the back, they were standing right behind it. We scared the crap out of them. They scared the crap out of us. And we went and slept in residential. So the only like weird spooky time Laura and I have ever had sleeping um, in the vehicle was, uh, was in Creston. And I do remember like making a stir fry in one of the public parks over there and like it's just being super buggy um but funny stuff anyways right literally right here we're parked i think this actually used to be like a dirtier lot they've kind of redone it and uh, we thought ah perfect spot to crash but we were bothered anyways we're gonna keep moving on and i'm gonna go find a spot to uh, t take another pee break because it's not a dirt lot anymore and the visitor center is closed time to stock up on food for the next few days And I'm filling gas again. So two full tanks almost to get there. Probably by the time we get there, two full tanks. I think it was like, what, 160 a tank on this thing? A $300 trip, cheaper than flying probably. 12 and a half hours later, I've arrived at the pad. Looks, looks chill, you know, good price. Called the Cause. Got a nice little desk here, I'll give you the tour. You can see my truck outside. Here's the digs, the digs for the night. 12 hours later, 12 and a half hours later, my legs are cramping. Looks good to me. I don't know if that's a, is that a fridge or a safe? I got some stuff I want a fridge. That'd be cool if it's a fridge. Oh, it is, nice. Perfect, we got a fridge, bed, got the workstation, sick. That is the smallest TV I have probably ever seen in recent times. What, what would that be, 14 inch TV? Hilarious. This relic, guys. It's the, the TV's the size of my roast chicken. <laughs> a dinner and a movie, baby. Groovy dinner and a movie. Hotel salad. Oh, shit. Fantasy bar soap. Does anyone else find that these, uh, does anyone else find these soaps in whole, like cheap, cheap hotels? If anyone goes to them like I do, uh, motels, they, they never really rubs off on your hand. It's just like a block of something. There's no, uh, there's no cups in the room and I forgot my water bottle downstairs. I don't feel like walking down, I'm starving. So I'm just gonna drink out of my own bowl. Ah. Dinner time. Full chicken, man. Full chicken, living in Lux in here. It's a little weird on this bed. It smells like they sprayed perfume on the sheets. It's like they washed the sheets, but then wanted to give them one last hit of scent. So it's so strong. And I'm actually really sensitive to scents. Like, um, you know, I'm actually you know, really sensitive to perfume. This stuff gives me bad allergies. So I'm probably gonna get, uh, get wrecked by whatever spray they put on this. If I rub my dirty hair on the pillow long enough, it'll reduce its scent. I'm really excited for Castle. I've heard so many good things about Castle. This super big, gorgeous mountain range is in here. I've never been to this area of Alberta. It's called the Crow's Nest Pass. And there's lots of big, cool mountains kind of in, uh, in this town, like Rockies-esque mountains. And I'm not sure what that little baby ski hill is called, but it's awesome. It's super funny. See what I mean? We got monsters here, dude. There is quite literally no snow on that face. But imagine that, sun rising, blue sky, skiing down that face. This is a really scenic drive. 
We stoked about this. This was a massive rock slide called the Frank Slide. That is a lot of rocking. The whole mountain fell. Looks like we got a little bit of a cloud, three degrees, so maybe a dusting of snow if we're lucky. But I can see a few ski runs poking out there. reminds me of Manning Park where I grew up. Everyone's just got their trailers for the whole season down at the base area, hanging out, chilling. Gorgeous views in here. A little bit of snow coming down, which is nice. I look like one of those street cyclists in Vancouver. I don't know why they wear their, their heads popped up like that all the time. I spilled hot sauce in my jacket this morning. So my pocket is loaded with, uh, <laughs> with liquid courage. And I just smell like a bag of salt and vinegar chips right now. Oops, that might be the longest T-bar I've ever seen. I hope it opens. I have to ride it. 500, 500 plus meters of vert on a T-bar. It's beauty. The T-bar apparently is called the T-Rex. Pretty damn big. So here's the plan. Here's the map. It looks super sick. So we're going to head up to the Tamarack chair. Hit some of these uh, steeper things up off the Tamarack chair and then work our way down off the chutes on the backside here and then come back. Maybe I could warm up with a groomer, maybe not. Who needs a groomer? Who needs a groomer today? I'm sweating though, I thought it was gonna be colder. Fully layered up, sweating. We got a little bit of a low tide at the bottom. We got snow falling. I spy a little fun little chute right there. This is where a lot of castles free riding goes down. Look at that, it's almost like a coffin drop in, like a straight line drop in off that rock. You've got like a double drop on the right side, you can't quite see. Pretty sweet zone for uh, for going big and, and, and doing kind of groovy cliffs in front of the chair. Red chair, blue chair, it's a classic. That is hands down the funniest chairlift entrance I've ever seen, an absolute classic. So beauty, reminded me of just like a barnyard. Really, you come up this chair and it kind of really expands. There's a lot of kind of alpine terrain here. Super slick, look. Got a big open bowl on the right side. I think that'll be a good one to start her off on. Just a big open bowl on the right. Lots of fall line. Left side looks like a pretty good run. Yeah, thank you. First run, and I've done this so many times, is I take out a skinnier ski and then I just want to be on the Unleashed 114. I haven't detuned or adjusted the edges on the, the 99s, the other ski that I brought. So they really tend to feel best on groomed terrain. Anything where the snow is softer, like punch crust or anything, I find the tail grabs a little too much and I just feel better on the 114s that have kind of just dulled out a bit. There's some sweet snow drift. So like the snow is kind of pushed in to a few slots, uh, making some of the slots pretty fun. So I think we're gonna find some, find some fun snow today. It changes from non-deposited to deposited snow. It's kind of tricky. Nice. Don't mind that at all. Wind is making 
big and it's so hard to see anything through here. Park this way. Good sun over here, that's fun. North Bowl. Check it out. Powder horns, high north runs. Okay. Good intel. Sketchy. Sketchy. Okay. Woo. All right. Getting warmed up again. Legs are waking up. I'm taking a lot of stops just to make sure I get a feel kind of for the snow pack. What's under a lot of this. Oh, this looks groovy. Oh. You gotta face shot yourself, even with a really minimal covering. There's a lot of terrain up here. Let's go down that way. So yeah, the snowpack gets super low, but that upper stuff, so worth it. A power run down here would be full bliss, guys. Oh, the gas got turned on there. That felt good. I feel like I'm back at it. Daddy's back. That's my kind of run right there. That's just like full fall line trees, top to the bottom. Length of both chairlifts. The bottom part was getting a bit sparse, but the top part was super fun. Coming through that fresh snow. Huge difference about snow this light, cold, and dry is it's still like face shotting you when there's like three inches of it or less, you know, three inches of wind drifted snow still feels pretty damn fun so that was that was groovy in there i like that side i might honestly ride both chairs and do that again and just kind of wait until the the shoot side opens up a bit more back into the powder horns now same spot as last time where do we go tighter trees you wonder if the snow would kind of just blow it almost just into this bowl right we'll go check these trees out similar run kind of a bit of a different slot What was it wrong? <laughs> nice. There's some fresh. <laughs> This stuff looks groovy. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is why we're here. Yeah, exactly, man. Again, you're getting in and then going across. Cross and then following and then the fall in. line. And you can see where the choke points are down yeah. there. Man, when you get fresh pal blue skies and you've got keg as a backdrop here, oh, it's crazy. must be insane. It is. <laughs> it is. Opening day when we open the shoots is really good. Yeah. Wow, light. Woo! 
Skiing off there, super sick. Now the vision's getting a bit better. That's a little ice caked or a couple rocks hiding there. Woo! Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, that's pretty cool. Holy cow. That's a mega mountain behind there. There's two yard sales in one day. There, that was just awkward. I kind of just caught something weird in the snow, kind of twisted around backwards. I did like ski ballet, but thankfully um, I came out all right. I just kind of had a little bit of a smash up. No big deal. And it takes uh, takes a bit of torque for my uh, my skis to eject. Like they're not going to eject on those slow, awkward ones. Um, but two in a day, that's, uh, that's a new one. Usually I just stick to the one a day, one fall a day program. It was sweet running into that castle guide because he showed me the shoots area there. Uh, have more confidence now when I went down in there. Then you could see the kind of sky cleared up. So the viz was pretty good. Those lines are sick. They're so my speed. There's like rock bands in the middle and then they just fire down. It, it is gorgeous. I'm in there and those runs are steep. Just shoots down the side of the mountain. Just so much fun. So I think we're going to lap those probably four times. Just pluck off each shoot. I, I can't help myself. And, uh, and try not to fall again this time, you know? Sustained fall line. These shoots are all crazy sick. Freaking awesome in here, man. You gotta stay super wide. Just kind of work your way through it. A bit of the hard path. Ready for anything, any type of snow, any rock, really. Just kind of edge to edge skiing. You! Huh. Hell yeah. Oh. So we've done the two shoot paths. Those are so fun. The next one I think we'll do is go like through those trees at the top. We won't get cliffed out or anything. So the trees right before it opens up and then we'll ski this kind of line right here. We'll give that a try. This is the line I spotted from the chair. It's really hard to say because I can't see over the knoll. So worst case, I get rocked or cliffed out. Best case, I get a fun line. It's a little, a little crusty. Looks like a straight escape. I think I'm in the right zone. If not, I'll just see the interesting snow in here. Huh. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Oh. Well, this is nice. Holy cow! <laughs> ah. 
I nailed the line that I wanted. Super rad, but it kind of holds right in these little nuggets here, eh? Oh, woo. oh, <laughs> right in these little wind pockets. That's more happy to bring out. <laughs> Who knew there was such spicy terrain in Pincher Creek, Alberta, Love. behind Castle Mountain? I 35 with the top down, quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Like Seem like everybody wanna be the boss, but it comes to these lames, ain't shit like me. <laughs> Drop a couple Woo. bands on the crypto fans, no way shit go. I ain't gotta tell them what it is. So this is the one I did the first time where I jumped a little cliff bend in the middle. What a mega avalanche path. And face shots right through there. Nice little cliff band here, too. Go flinging off it if the conditions allowed. Whoa. One centimeter of snow and you want face shots? No problem. Just come to Castle Mountain, find a windblown slot, and ski it hard. Watch this. Lone Star Desperado, lots of fall on, rough through lots of fall on. All of the far shoots, all these far shoots are still, uh, they're closed today. A size three avalanche got busted there last week, so nothing's open in that zone. Um, but these are skiing so well, they're so fun. It'll do Desperado, even though the far right was giving us the most, most face shots of the year. One centimeter dump face shots. We'll give this side a little try here. I don't think I've done Desperado yet. So I knew Desperado kind of beneath where the rocks are. Cause I figure people don't want to ski in spots like this cause they see the rocks, right? We might get some juicy snow, some good snow through here. Unless it's all been blown to the other corner, but we'll find out. Yeah, it feels, feels like it's got the chop to it. It's a rock, probably. Woo! Oh, yeah! No way! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I could ski those all month. I could probably ski those all year when the conditions are good in them. But we're gonna try something a little different. We're gonna head up and go over to Huckleberry Bowl and Huckleberry Ridge and uh, just kind of mess around in some trees over there and see if, uh, see if we can get ourselves into a little bit of tree trouble.
little adventure on here, Huckleberry Ridge. No clue how the snow's gonna be. Could be good. Could be zero out of ten. Let me know once we go. Two tracks is on wildly uncommon or irrational. Whoa! Oh, right on. Fully loaded. Call me Bucky, lucky that I'm innocent. Uh, if I didn't have no morals, I'd be innocent. Uh, how about that rapping conscious with the ignorant? Uh, I ain't got the hood, but still won't go legitimate. Uh, I ain't fuck a bunch of b****s, but they still respect the women. He's the running, that's another. He just got the window still at home. He got me in the back and that can never be forgiven. And my body been itching, man, I like the superstition. Mm -hmm. Here too. Mm -hmm. You can't have my phone number unless you're running up the wow. new jets. Whoa, look at these trees. What run is that? Drifter, maybe? I'm gonna have to do this stuff. Sick. It ain't over. It ain't over yet. Lots to explore. That's a really sweet zone, guys. This is like a fun little gully the whole way down. Man, this mountain's just filled with uh, with surprises on every corner. I thought the shoots are the only place you want to be. Full pow day, you're over here. Well, pow, man. Watch for sticks. Watch for stones and rocks and all that crappy stuff. Run a little snow bridge, but we're good. No pro, oh, rocks. Where are we going? Back in the truck, what a day. Honestly, I wasn't expecting too much. We had low viz, one centimeter of fresh snow, and the one thing that came in clutch, well, two things. One, the wind at Castle just blows all the snow around to like fun places. So once you figure out where the snow has blown, then you can just ski pow. Like it felt like I was just skiing pow today, and it was just wind blowing stuff. I love wind. Also, Castle is loaded with fall line. From the north side, in those trees, to the Huckleberry, I think it's called Ridge, all the way down, or the Chutes. Like, my God, there is so much fall line at this mountain. I was a kid in a candy store all day long. So much fun. Castle's definitely far from Vancouver, but if you're doing a Powell Highway trip and you're in the area of Fernie, it is 100% worth a stop without a doubt it's such a fun place to ski now it's time to dry the gloves and goggles on the dashboard and hit the road once again thanks for coming along with me today i'll see you in the next one stay safe until then and most importantly stay spicy i'll see you in the next one